So in the last video, I walked you through how we can implement our new development workflow by pushing and pulling images. Uh, and one of these steps we can actually automate. So, uh, you know, when we push a new image to Docker Hub, wouldn't there be, wouldn't it be cool if there was a nice way to have the production server automatically detect that we pushed a new image and pull that new image? Well, there is a tool that we can use called Watchtower that will automatically check Docker Hub periodically for a new image. And whenever an image gets pushed, it'll automatically pull it to your production server and then restart a, your container with the brand new image. Now, some people, you know, like this feature, some people don't, right? Some people don't like to automatically push out changes to their production server because, you know, they want to mainly do it so manually do it so that they can verify that everything runs okay. Because you don't want it to accidentally pull an image and then, um, you know, have it potentially crash out with some error logs while you're not there at the command line. So, uh, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but I did want to show you guys how we can automate that step. So here in Google, I'm just going to quickly search for Docker Watchtower. And so here, this is the GitHub page for this. And what we want to do is just go to the full documentation page. And this is going to have a quick start for you. Uh, so it's going to show you how to actually use this feature, but it's a special container that'll just periodically watch Docker Hub uh, for a specific image. And if it sees a new image get pushed out, it's going to pull that image automatically for you and restart the container. So it's a container that handles the automation of your other containers. And there's plenty of documentation, but I'm just going to show you guys how to run this real quick. And let's go to our production server. So let's do Docker PS. You can see all the containers we have, and that's just for our application. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a Docker run dash D. There's going to be a lot of flags, by the way. So let's give this container a name. So I'm going to say name uh, Watchtower. And then we're going to pass in some uh, flags, some environment variables. So we're going to call this Watchtower underscore trace. And if you're wondering where I'm getting these, you know, just take a look at the documentation. So uh, you can see under arguments, I think it's under here, you'll see all of the environment variables. And uh, if I search for trace, so it's going to show us, you know, this is just going to include trace mode with verbose logging. So I like having extra logs. Uh, and then we're also going to pass in the poll interval. So this is going to tell us how long we, how frequently we should poll uh, Docker Hub. So watchtower underscore trace is going to be set to true if you do want the trace on you, or you can set it to false. Then we're going to pass in one more environment variable called watchtower underscore debug equals true. And then one more, this is going to be watchtower underscore poll underscore interval. This could be set to 50. So I think that should be every 50 seconds, we should check for a new image. And then we have to set up this volume. Uh, so this is just come straight from the documentation. So we do slash var slash run slash uh, docker dot sock. And then colon slash var slash run slash docker dot sock. And that should not be in all capitals, by the way. And then we have to specify the image. So the image uh, just comes from that repository. Um, but if you look at the homepage, you can see that the image is just container slash watchtower. That's container with three R's, by the way. All right, so now if we do a Docker PS, we've got our new container, it's running. And let's just do a Docker logs and then just grab this container and then pass in the dash F flag. <coughs> All right, so it looks like it's running the list of retrieved containers. And I realized I made a mistake. So there's a, uh, the one important thing that we have to pass into this Docker run command is the list of services that we actually want to watch. Because right now it doesn't know which services we want to watch. So let me stop this. And let me just do a Docker RM. And 
And then we'll just use a dash F flag to delete it. And then we're going to run that long command again. But here we have to specify the services or the containers that we want it to watch out for. So in this case, we have this app node app one. So we wanted to make sure that there's um, that if a new image gets pushed for this container to to Docker Hub, that it automatically pulls it. All right. So you could specify as many different containers as you want. So I'm just going to use just this one. And then now let's do a Docker logs watch. All right. So now retrieve running containers. Uh, and then um, basically nothing's happening except it's saying that a check will be performed in 49 seconds. Uh, so let's um, make a change to our code and push an image. So I'm going to add quotations and then some extra fun stuff. We're going to do the two usual steps. We're going to do a build. And then we're going to do a push. And then let's take a look at the logs and let's see um, if after the time limit, after the 50 seconds, it does successfully detect that there's an image and it rebuilds our container. And look at that, something happened. What happened? Let's see. Uh, so this is where we were. All right, then it's checking. So the 50 seconds in, it's going to check for containers for updated image. It retrieved uh, the running containers. All right, trying to load authentication credentials. No credentials for sloppy networks found. And we were still able to get an image, right? So this, remember, this is the reason why it's checking for credentials is because there's a possibility that one of my images or one of my containers uses a image from a private repository. So if it did use a image from a private repository, we would have to make sure that we just did a Docker login, right? So it would look like Docker login and you, you would just do this on your production server. And then, you know, if you aren't logged in, it's going to actually ask for credentials. So let me log out just to show you what that looks like. So now that if we do a Docker login, you would then put in your username. And I already messed that up. And then your password. So if you have, if you are using a private repository, make sure to do that on your production server so that your production server can actually access it. Um, but so we don't actually need it. Not a big deal because it's a public repository. We got the image that our container is using. So our container is using sloppy network slash node app. We're checking if pull is needed. So now it's basically querying Docker Hub. And then it's going to do a few other things. A few other things. A few other things. I guess with like authentication and a few other things like that. Uh, right. So then it says it's determined that there is a new image. So it's going to do a pull. So it's pulling the new image. Uh, then it stopped our container. It's deleting our container. It's creating a brand new container. It's then starting the new container. Right. And then after 50 seconds, it's going to do all of the same stuff over again. All right. So let's test this out. So remember, we, we didn't do anything. This was all automated. So if I hit send, you could see all the changes that got pushed out. So we've automated that last final step in our uh, development to production workflow, where we pull the image uh, into our production server and we're letting our production server automatically do it for us using this watchtower container. And let's just test it out just to make sure that it works fully again. Uh, so I'm just going to delete these. I'm going to do a Docker build. And then let's do a Docker push. And you can see during the last run, it said no new images were found. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty smart at being able to detect when a new image gets pushed. So let's give it another 30 seconds or so, and we should see those changes get applied. So right now, we're still using the old image because we still have all those extra characters. But once we see this update, we should then be able to send a request and get the updated code. All right, so it ran, so it looks like it updated. It. So it's stopping our container. Give it a few more seconds to create a brand new container. All right, and so now it's good to go. So let's test this out, hit send, and there we go.